Oh, Jared, what'd you break now? You've had the car for a day, son. Look, no coolant leaking on the ground over here. What do you got going on here, brother? Huh? I'm driving to your shop and here and home. Well, Bobby's been driving her for two weeks and it hasn't done this at all. You lifted the head? Uh, probably, she got too much power. Pop the damn hood on this thing. Oh wait, she's already popped. Is it? No. Come and start it. Yeah, fire it up real quick. Honestly, I don't give a shit. They ain't gonna catch on fire. It's antifreeze. Is that what it is, you think? Oh, 100%. You can smell it. Okay. Yeah, well, it's burning up. That's why it was so long. Cool, it. Yeah, it's probably. Flat foot there. probably. <laughs> that turbo sounds a little sus. Yeah. A little sus. Good old Jared. I dug my butt in the shop. Why, is your guns hanging out? Yeah. Oh. What I, happened to the she's just She's just leaking antifreeze. Where from? I don't know. I didn't see. A little sus though, huh? Mm -hmm. What do you got to say to Jared about breaking your car? Yeah, what the heck, Jared? That's my favorite car. That's a damn flat foot there. <laughs> it's okay, babe. I don't care. What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Really want to get cracking on Jared's turbo kit. We are waiting on a few other little things that arrive tomorrow. So today is going to be kind of like a buttoning up type of type of night. I'm not going to lie. It's it's pretty late right now. We've been doing Boston orders all day. Uh, appreciate you guys, by the way. Last drop freaking killed it. I would say it's our biggest drop to date. Yeah, it definitely was our biggest drop to date. And they only seem to be getting bigger and bigger. So it's pretty pretty insane. We do have some gauges to get installed. So this car currently has some Pro Sports in it, Pro Sport Wideband and a Pro, and a Pro Sport Boost. We are going AEM everything. So we have oil pressure, wideband, and boost. I did go ahead and pick up our line that we need for the fuel regulator setup that we were working on yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. We have this little vent pod and i do need to get the oil pan back on the car so we have some brake cleaner chilling here we need to get the oil pan cleaned up we need to get the block cleaned up and of course some seat gasket sealer i'm gonna obviously let it dry extra this time around um last time it was about two hours this time i'll probably do like it's gonna be like two days probably until this thing sees the light of day gauges are always a little bit fun to install I feel like you can do it quick and and easy and not a very clean wiring job, or you can really take your time, cut wires, trim wires, extend wires, and uh, do it right. We have a few hours tonight, and we're gonna tackle all of these projects. And then tomorrow we should hopefully get the turbo and manifold on and probably get the first startup as well. That's the goal. We have the pan back on, it's all sealed up. You can see a nice little squeeze around the outside. Not gonna lie, I put a little bit more se more sealant on than I normally would, just because the last thing I wanna do is reseal the pan again. So a little more sealant and uh, she's, gonna, she's gonna dry for a while. 
I also did go ahead and cut open the filter again. So I think this is like the fifth filter we've ran on this car. This thing obviously having a bearing failure when it bent the rod. We wanted to make sure we had all everything out of the engine. Looks like this time around is super nice and clean. This is uh, probably 200 miles on this filter and the first few, I'm not gonna lie, the first few filters worried me. There was quite a bit of gunk in there and then it got less and less and now there's pretty much none. So we should be good there. Let's go ahead and move on to some gauges. Fun, fun. Let's start off with the wide band. Being that we have the car up in the air, we do need access to the exhaust anyway. So this one here is our AFR gauge. So this is gonna be for the power and for data logging as well. We do need to set that up. Not necessarily today, but in the future, we do need to set it up to data log the AFRs. This is the main one we need right now. And of course, our wideband sensor as well. So let's go ahead and pull out the Pro Sports. Let's see, where is that guy located? So right up there is our current wideband and it runs underneath here. That's where it goes up into the cabin. So let's get that guy pulled out, get that zip tie cut, and we can get our Pro Sport. I guess we should just go ahead and completely remove all of our Pro Sport gauges that are currently in the car. Wideband sensor is installed. Went ahead and tied it up to the heat shield there and over there. Got it all nice and cleaned up. Went through the rubber grommet right under that black cover that's full of oil from the oil pan leak. So that's all finished up. Also, I noticed with the wideband sensors, I burned them up quite a bit and I think it's because they were at a horizontal, like a just a straight out the side angle like that. This one is sticking straight up. This car's never had an issue, but like if you put it in like that, an AEM wideband tends to burn up pretty quick. So if you can put it at an angle facing up like that or straight up is even better. I went ahead and pulled out all the Pro Sport gauges. We have the wideband wiring ran. It comes up underneath the seat, goes under the carpet, runs right back there over the tunnel, behind the dash, and then it comes out right here. So that is the main long wire that runs from the gauge down to the sensor. This other wiring just runs from the gauge, and then we got a power on ground, and then, like I said earlier, the white. I believe the white is for data logging, and I'm not sure what the blue is for. All of the power on ground are gonna be connected in the same location, so let's go ahead and move on to our boost. Um, oil pressure is very, very simple. We already have a good spot picked out for it, but we do still have to run the wires through the firewall, which is probably the most annoying part of this whole gauge install process. So the location I like to use is that boot right there. It's gonna be actually pretty easy because the turbo is out of this car, no intake, no nothing. So we have plenty of access to that location. So we gotta punch a hole through that boot and then through that hole, we pull the wiring for the oil pressure and then the hose for the boost. So I'm just gonna grab a little Phillips and stab a little hole in that thing. So you can see our boost line is ran through that boot. Next up is our oil pressure. Now this thing needs to be extended. We're putting the oil pressure sender, you guys can see right down there. 
that plug right there, that little L you guys see, we're gonna pull that out and that's where the oil pressure sensor is, or the sender is gonna go. This wiring is not nearly long enough, so the easiest way to get it through the firewall or through that boot, we're actually gonna cut it. We have to extend it anyway. So I'm gonna cut it right about here, feed it through, route all the wiring in the engine bay exactly how I want it routed, and then we can go in the cabin and get this guy extended to run up to our gauge. All right, the hard part's done. All the wiring and lines and whatnot are ran through the firewall. I'm gonna go ahead and get our oil pressure sender and now get the get all the oil pressure stuff completely done. And then we have the boost sender, some wiring on the inside, and this thing is pretty much ready to go as far as gauges go. So this here is what that plug looks like where the oil pressure sender is gonna go. We do need an adapter. Let me show you guys why. Here's the oil pressure sender. There's the plug that we pulled out. So a nice little adapter like that is all that is needed. You can see the sender installed down in there, wiring's connected, everything else is gonna be done inside the bay. So we just have to extend the oil pressure sensor wiring and then wire up the power ground on all three gauges and we should be all finished up. So this guy right here, this is gonna go from the boost sender up to the gauge and then in the same harness we have the power and ground. Oh man, a couple hours later, all the gauges are wired up. Everything is good to go. Uh, turn on the ignition. You can see our three AEM gauges. So we got oil pressure there, then it goes boost and then wide band. And then of course down here we have the ethanol content. So it's a pretty sick setup in this car. I really, really like it. It's a little bit different than my 10. My 10 has the Ortiz pod with a gauge there, a gauge there, and then ethanol is up there and oil pressure is in the same spot there. So yeah, pretty dope. I like it. We still have these two wires here. I know we need to do some with these for data logging, so I'm not gonna uh, cut these off completely yet. I did a ton of cutting, a ton of trimming. So ground goes there and then I just did a add a fuse, which I don't really want to show you guys because it's extremely, extremely late. It's a Sunday night and I'm sitting here at the shop on a Super Bowl Sunday. And if I told you guys what time it was, you'd probably think I'm crazy. So I'll keep that to myself. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, clean up the shop, get everything put back together in this car. We gotta put the carpet back down and get the fire extinguisher back in. Um, other than that, this thing is good to go as far as gauges go. So I'm glad we got this done now and we did it right, we, we took our time. It's all nice and clean, simple, simple yet effective, like I always like to say. And now all that's left is the turbo intercooler and turn this thing up to the moon. Everything that we just installed, all three gauges, all the pods that we got going on, uh, the adapter for the oil pressure sender, all that will be linked down in the description box below. If we're gonna do gauges on your Evo 10, I hope this video helps you out bit of a pain in the ass. I would uh, expect your arm to look like that when you're all finished up because wiring and stuff underneath the dash is no fun. Peace out my friends. I'll see you guys tomorrow.